Tom, a.k.a. Gedeon here, for the Star Frontiers Gamer. And this is day two of our eight days of Star Frontiers Robotics. So welcome back. And make sure if you haven't already caught it, we've got uh, video one, uh, day one is out. There's a download link in the video description of both of these videos for you to be able to download the robot that we're going to kit bash together today uh, from the from the ground up right through um, missions and functions, and you will have the document that you'll be able to use this bot in your Star Frontiers game. So today we're doing the heavy-duty Star Frontiers robot. Now, heavy-duty robots have been done in Star Frontiers, and uh, this uh, illustration here comes to us from uh, Face of the Enemy, War Machine. From War Machine, the module called War Machine, Nighthawks module, uh, one of the last modules published by TSR for Star Frontiers. And so, you know, you have this crazy, heavy duty, monstrous, um, almost bolo sized tank like heavy duty machine. The heavy duty body uh, on a heavy duty robot is about the size of a, like a bulldozer or a SUV. So, you know, this is definitely oversized. It's kind of kind of cool because you see it's using the whatever this uh, shoveling limb is for smashing a Sathar tank, a small little Sathar tank that's uh, getting crushed there. That's kind of cool. Uh, but that is not our inspiration. Our inspiration is this it's a Chinese um, drilling, boring robot that I found on the web. Uh, so it's real world inspiration, and this is the picture we're going to work from today. And uh, so I'm going to go with this because uh, you know you, it's just you, you need mining robots occasionally when you've got a you know mine something's happened at the mine site and the corporation wants you to go and look. So this would be one of the robots you'd employ there. So let's start out with uh, naming this bad boy. I'm going to call him the Auto. The auto bore mark two. Auto bore mark two. And we'll go ahead and just say it's being uh, built by Tacton, which is the megacorp in the frontier that's concerned with robotics. And we're going to go with level two. It's not able to talk to the player characters, it is able to be communicated with via. Uh, machine language through electronic, it can receive electronic signals, but it does not have a voice synthesizer. So we're going level two. And that means when we um, consult the table, let's bring up the uh, rule book. So uh, right over here on the rule book, uh, again, I'm going to make the point standard robotic cost table. This gets ignored. This includes several different things. And, and I've detected in some of these pricings, like as many as three different things have been included in that cost. And uh, so this is a landmine. And we're not going to start with these prices. We're going to ignore these prices because this is just a, a ballpark figure for the game master to have a, a down and dirty. Here's about what this this complete robot would cost uh, numbers for him. So we're starting with level two robotic processor, 500 credits, heavy duty body, 5,000 credits. Let's jump back to our worksheet here. So level two, 500, body type, heavy duty. And that's going to cost 5,000. That dictates our... Our stamina, our STA, so 500. And movement mode. Well, let's jump right back to the workbook and go to page 47. So here we are on page 57 where we've got the table for ro uh, robots top speed. And the first line here where my cursor is is Cybot. Uh, heavy duty service robots and brain. They move at 30 meters per turn. Let's return to our worksheet. And we're going to specify. Now we can specify that the movement mode is 
walking tracks um uh, we're we're gonna you know wheels. We're gonna go with tracks because that matches the inspiration. Tracked movement mode. There is no extra cost for that. The speed is thirty meters per turn. You know, and they they don't need this robot to go fast, so thirty meters per turn is fine. Now the power source. Uh, I happen to know for a fact that the heavy-duty sized robot body requires a Type 2 para battery. battery. And that's going to dictate the SEUs being 1,000, and the cost for this is 1,200 back on the price list under para batteries. We are not going to give this a, an attack defense program. So we don't need to give him his combat stats, our NA and NA programs. This is kind of a robot that's going to be controlled from a uh, computer management program in the office of the mining site, wherever the foreman is. So this robot will need the computer link. And because nobody likes their robot being screwed with, security, security lock is 500 credits well spent. So computer links, 4,000 credits for that program. Security, uh, the security lock is 500 credits. So that's 4,500. <clears throat> Installed equipment. The uh, mine foreman needs to be able to direct this. So this, it, this robot will need some sort of communication device. We're going to put in radio phone. as it has a longer range than the Chronicom. Toxy rad, you know, this is, this thing's going down in mine shafts. So Toxy rad gauge is a smart piece of equipment to put on this <clears throat> to detect uh, poison gas. It can uh, report that information back uh, through the radio phone and the computer link uh, that it's detecting poison gas as it's drilling it's reached a pocket and the gas is coming in. So that warns the sapient um, mining employees not to go down there without a gas mask. And then uh, I think, I feel like it should have extra lights on it. So we're going to put flashlights. Four. Oops. Times four. Now, I know I could totally go over to the Zebulon's Guide and grab the power light. And that seems like that would be a good choice. But honestly, I don't feel like the robot really needs power light. I, I just feel like a little bit of extra light uh, over and above any lights that the robot itself would have. Um, you know, so four extra flashlights, they're cheap. So altogether, um, the radio phone is 500 credits. The Toxy Rag Gauge is 20, and the flash uh, four flashlights adds another 20. So we have a total cost of 540 credits. Now let's go back and total all these up, and that will give us 11 74 740 total, and our Inspiration is a real world uh, drill rig, drill slash boring robot, because I do believe this is a Chinese robot. So that is our real world inspiration. We've included that in the snap lock. So we're uh, calling this the Auto Bore Mark II. Uh, it's used in mining under the control of a robot brain or robot management program. Either one is going to be necessary for this robot to function because it's level two, so it's very limited. Its mission is to drill, bore, 
drill slash bore mine tunnels under the direction of a controller or foreman. And you notice here, I have, uh, I have two words that are all caps. Those will be my functions. So the controller is defined as a particular robotic brain or orders received from a particular robotic management program. <clears throat> That's where it's authorized to. So if it's receiving orders and it's not from one of these two sources, uh, you know, and the, the, you know, the function might drop robotic brain, the, you know, the, this mind site might just use the robot management program. So it's whoever's running their little office and running their computer, giving direction to the, to the uh, to the bore to the mining robot, so uh, you can shorten that controller down to one of those. But it's it's only going to accept orders from this. Or a foreman is defined as anyone wearing a hard hat and displaying company ID. Um, this function includes data on identifying company IDs and the company name. So anyone wearing the appropriate badge with a hard hat giving it orders. This would be for down in the mine shaft, the foreman's going, hey, 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 stop what you're doing there. You're going to cause a collapse. Come over here, drill over here. So it's that sort of thing. And that seems like a, a uh, precaution that would be taken. So I've added that. And then number three, it, uh, this function tells it that it must avoid harming sapient beings. This function includes data on the Versk, Yazarian, Drolocytes, and Humanity, so it can identify them as sapient beings. Note, if you had some alien, like say you had included the Vim from uh, one of the early Star Frontiers magazines, this robot would not recognize them as a sapient being <laughs> and would not care if it hurt them. And so I've written this very intentionally because this is the type of thing that could come up and cause complications in the game and force the players to deal with it. Also, it would, uh, this robot is not going to care about native wildlife, just going to run them over. It has no concern for, her, uh, for hurting them. We probably should add this language to the mission. while avoiding arming sapient life. Oops, I spelled sapient wrong. Well, avoiding sapient life. All right, so we've added that to the mission to reflect this third function, feels like it should be in the mixture. Now, idiosyncrasies. Uh, while it won't hurt the core four species, uh, other intelligent species could be hurt. I, we talked about that. Uh, it can be directed to bore through almost anything, a building's wall, a vehicle, etc. So there is a possibility to use this uh, uh, bore mining uh, robot to uh, attack something. Uh, if it's directed to bore through a vehicle, it will stop once it tore into it and observed a member of the core four species inside. We should add species there, the core four species inside. <clears throat> but we we'll resume, it would resume. So it would, it's, it's, it's been directed, uh, let's say that, you know, whoever's running the mining site uh, wants to attack the player characters. They drive up in their Explorer vehicle, and this robot's told to attack the Explorer. It'll start tearing into it, but the minute it rips it open and observes members of the Core 4 species, it will stop. If they all get out of the vehicle, it'll then continue. <clears throat> so one limb of the, and then the fourth idiosyncrasy is one limb of the bore drill um, one limb is the bore drill, and the other is on the backside as a bucket loader. So you can't see it in the picture. I'm imagining uh, that this robot has a like a backhoe bucket, scoop it up and dump it into a, a dump body, heavy-duty robot to move the uh, crushed up rock so it can be processed. And then here's our stat listing. Stamina is 500. It, uh, you know, heavy duty body carries a lot of stamina. If it did attack, it would have a melee of 50. Um, I've provided uh, 
you know, initiative modifier and reaction speed here. It doesn't have that. I've also supplied the damage done because this robot would never carry, you know, a laser rifle. It'll never carry a machine gun. So it's going to strictly be doing damage with its robotic limbs, and that damage is 60-10, a little bit high. It's right up there on par with like a, you know, a, a sonic sword. Programs are computer link and, oops, computer link and security lock. Security lock. And installed equipments, radio phone, toxie, rag gauge, and four flashlights as extra headlights. Put the word extra in there. It's my, you know, mine shafts are dark, so a little bit of extra light, it'll be good. And that is our mining robot. Not very sexy, but um, something that you would use in a um, mine location if you're doing, you know, the player characters are sent to investigate what's going on at this mine location um, by the company. Doesn't know why it's, it's uh, all the shipments of ore have stopped from this mine location. So the player characters are being sent to investigate or uh, they are from a rival company and they're going to that mining operation to disrupt the operations. And then they, they, they have a little problem where the, the boring robots, the mining robots attack their vehicle at the very least. Um, you know, and, and it's also possible that uh, whoever's the, the baddie at the uh, mine location has reprogrammed the robots and added self-defense or attack defense programs. And so uh, then they would be able to attack outright. So this is Tom signing out for the Star Frontiers Gamer. Thanks for watching my video. Thanks to all my subscribers. You guys are great. And I'll see you all in the frontier.